Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to try to explain to you how synaptic fusion occurs as quickly as possible. So let's give it a go. So I'd like to start off with a review of the basics. So how are neurotransmitters released in the first place? So inside the synaptic terminal of an axon, we have vesicles storing neurotransmitters. These vesicles are going to be stored in a specific region called the active zone. And the vesicles are stored, just going to hang out here until a signal comes in, allowing them to fuse with the membrane and to release their neurotransmitters. Now inside the axon, we have voltage-gated sodium channels. And as action potentials propagate, voltage-gated sodium channels open, allowing sodium to flow into the cell. The sodium will depolarize the membrane of the synaptic terminal, which will therefore open voltage-gated calcium channels. Voltage-gated calcium channels will allow calcium to flow in, increasing the intracellular calcium level, which will therefore facilitate the fusion of the vesicle with the membrane, and therefore release neurotransmitters into the synapse. Now in this video, we are going to be talking about in great detail the process of how the vesicle fuses with the membrane. We're going to start off this video by first identifying what proteins are in the vesicle and what proteins are in the presynaptic membrane that are required in order for vesicular fusion to occur. And then for the rest of the video, we're going to be talking about how all these proteins interact in order for vesicular fusion to occur. So let's begin. So we're going to begin by looking at a close-up of the vesicle and its neurotransmitters, as well as the presynaptic membrane, which we see here. Now this space is the cytosol, and this space is the uh, synaptic space. So we're going to start off by first looking at the docking stage. So the docking stage is basically when the vesicle is being stored at the active zone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to identify what proteins are present inside the vesicle and inside the presynaptic membrane in order to facilitate vesicular fusion. Now I'm going to be rattling off a lot of different names, however don't worry about all the names right now and what they do. We're going to be, as we go through this video and as we go through the process of synaptic fusion, we're going to be describing what each protein does and how they all interact in order to facilitate this process. So inside the vesicle, the first type of protein that we see is a protein known as synaptotagmin. Another protein that we see in the vesicle is this orange type of protein, which is synaptobrevin. Now, synaptobrevin is also known as a V-snare or a vesicular snare protein. Now, in the presynaptic membrane, we see uh, two proteins here, and these proteins are called SNAP25 proteins. We also see syntaxin. So syntaxin and SNAP25 are both known as T-snares, and these are the snare proteins that are present in the presynaptic membrane. The last protein that we see is RAB3, which is a GTPase, which is found in the vesicle. So now let's look and see how these proteins interact with each other in order to facilitate vesicular fusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how this all occurs. So the first thing that happens is that a specific protein in the cytosol comes in, and this protein is called MUNK18. So MUNK18 will come in, and it will bind synaptobrevin, SNAP25, and syntaxin together. So all MUNK18 is doing is it's basically clamping the V-snare and the T-snares together. And what happens is, is something called a ternary complex forms. So the ternary complex, simply put, is basically a complex of synaptobrevin, SNAP25, syntaxin, and MUNK18 all interacting together in a complex. So after the ternary complex forms, which, is, which occurs in the stage called the priming stage one, another protein in the cytosol comes in called complexin. So complexin come in, comes in and it binds to the complex. So what does complexin do? So when complexin binds to the complex, which occurs in priming stage two, 
So when complexin comes in and binds to the complex, what it basically does is it primes the complex to get it ready to fuse the vesicle when a signal comes in. And what this protein does, complexin, is that it basically prevents the spontaneous fusion of the vesicle with the presynaptic membrane. So it's sort of keeping it in this ready to go state. So when calcium flows into the cell, the complexin will leave and the vesicular fusion will occur. So then what has to happen is that we need to have an initiator signal. And this initiator signal, as we know, is calcium. So calcium will come in and it will bind to synaptotagmin on the vesicle. So when calcium comes in and binds to synaptotagmin, the synaptotagmin will displace complexin and bind to the complex in its place. So when synaptotagmin binds to the complex, the snare proteins will sort of pull the vesicle closer and closer to the presynaptic membrane, allowing a fusion pore to open. So this is called the fusion pore opening stage. So now what we see is the vesicle will fuse with the presynaptic membrane, forming what is called an omega complex because it looks like the Greek letter omega. So when, this, uh, fu when the fusion pore is opened, neurotransmitters will start to be released into the synapse. Now, as neurotransmitters are released into the synapse, a very important process is occurring. And this process is the extru extrusion and seclusion of calcium. Now, why would we need to extrude calcium from the cell and why would we, or why would we need to seclude it? Well, the reason why is because in order to end synaptic uh, fusion or vesicular fusion, we have to get rid of calcium. So as neurotransmitters are being released into the synapse, calcium is being removed from the cytosol. So the first protein that is responsible for this is PMCA, or the plasma membrane calcium ATPase. What it does is it basically pumps calcium from the cytosol into the extracellular fluid by using ATP hydrolysis to power it. And at the same time, in the mitochondria of the uh, synaptic terminal, what we see is that the mitochondria start secluding calcium as well. Both the mitochondria and the PMCA act to decrease the calcium level. So as calcium levels decrease in the cytosol, this causes calcium to dissociate from synaptotagmin. And when calcium dissociates from synaptotagmin, this will cause synaptotagmin to dissociate from the complex and synaptobrevin to dissociate from the vesicle, remaining at attached to the complex. So take note that as this is occurring, more and more neurotransmitters are being released into the synapse. Now, in order to reset the cycle, we have to dissociate this entire complex here. So how is this going to occur? Well, what's going to happen is a protein called alpha-SNAP is going to come in. So alpha-SNAP comes in and binds to the complex. Now, what alpha-SNAP does is it provides a binding site for another protein called NSF. So NSF will come in, and NSF is going to bind to alpha-SNAP. Now, NSF is an ATPase, so what it's going to do is it's going to use the power of ATP hydrolysis in order to dissociate this entire complex. So it's going to dissociate all of these proteins from each other. Now, when this occurs, it's going to dissociate all the proteins, and as this is occurring, more and more neurotransmitters are being released into the synapse. So once most of the neurotransmitters are released and all of these proteins are dissociated, what happens is, is that we go back to the docking stage. So what happens is, is that the T snares, SNAP25 and Syntaxin, basically unbind from the complex and, are, and remain inside the presynaptic membrane, and they remain ready for another vesicle to come near it and to start another fusion cycle. The synaptobrevin that remained inside this uh, synaptic presynaptic membrane is recycled through endocytosis and then used to create more vesicles and so forth. So what we have here is the T snares ready to go again and another vesicle will come in with all its proteins available and go through the cycle once again. Now I know this was a lot of material and a lot of different things happening. 
So in order to help you, I made this table highlighting the main events that happen in each stage. So this table will tell you what proteins are going where, how they're interacting with each other, and so forth. So I hope this video and this table helps you understand this complicated process, but important process, of synaptic fusion or vesicular fusion. So I hope to see you in the next video, and I hope you do well on your studies. See you next time.